all wearing Pulsar uh, rail gear there. T here is also repping Pulsar rail as well and he doesn't even work on the railway. Oh no, that's, that's a bit of fly tipping that is, that's someone's carpet from probably like 10 years ago. From their granddads and, well not even dads, yeah granddads and great granddads are working underneath those bricks and now they're using them as uh, bonfires in, inside the shed. Didn't see it there, it's Thomas Edwin, that's me, that is. And um, I'm in Buxton in Derbyshire. And it, it, this is going to be uh, part two, I think, of my uh, British Locomotive Shed Directory by Ian Allen. You know, and we're going to look at all the, the last steam sheds in the, in, the, in England. Well, what's left of them anyway? You know, some, are, some, are, some are completely gone, some are still there, or some are derelict, or, or pres uh, preservation has them now. So, uh, we're looking up, so part one we looked at Lost Stock Hall in Lancashire near Leyland. Now part two is we're looking at the, the steam shed in Buxton with the shed number 9L. And uh, I've started this video where it actually tells you where to go. So if we get in here to uh, page 20, there you go, 9L Buxton. The shed is on the east side of the London and North Western. So that's there, that's the London and North Western station there. And then across the road over there is the Midland Railway Station. But what's significant about this road here, that when this book was wrote in 1965, that road didn't, didn't exist. So in here, it says... It says on the east side of the London North Western Stockport line, north of the station, the yard is particularly visible from the line. Turn left outside the western platforms or right outside the Midland platforms, what's over there. Um, of Buxton Station into approach road and continue for the large gates. So, pretty much, that road wasn't there originally. This was all sort of stations, and you walk in for a, a goods yard on the back of London North Western Station. What will show you what doesn't really exist anymore. And then we're going to try and retrace the steps a bit further down on the road, what should be still there. And we should be able to pick his way through the streets, and there's like a little cinder path you have to walk up. To, to actually get to the shed. But in the 21st century, we've, we've got to sort of get through the jungle of uh, new roads and new buildings. So uh, let's, let's go and have a look what we can uh, find, you know, and find the old shed. So uh, this big wall behind me, what looks like a wall, 
is actually the last uh, remains of the Midland Railway Station and across the road over there is what we still have today, what's the main Buxton station, is the old uh, London North Western station. And just imagine in 1965 when this boat was rolled, that road wasn't there, it was, you know, it was, it was all very much railway. So uh, we'll go over to London North Western Station and, and begin our journey in finding the, the steam engine shed here, uh, shed number 9L. Right, it pushed button. Wow, Holly's. Holly's uh, hen sheds have just gone past. So we're outside the front of London North Western here and I'm going to not give instructions how to find the steam shed 9L and it says, I have to read it again here, that the shed is on the east side of the London North Western Stockport line, north of the station. The yard is particularly visible from the line. Turn left outside the western platforms or right outside the Midland platforms over there. Of, of Buxton Station into the approach road. Continue through large gates and along the goods yard road and then you turn left at the end into Charles Street. Now, I can't get through there because it's a building site and we've got to go and use the old, we've got to use the new bypass to get round it and find Charles Street. So uh, come on, let's, uh, let's go and find it. Well, as you can see here, they're building lots of new uh, retirement living homes and building all sorts of stuff. So uh, it's all blocked up and we can't go that way. So I've got to go down there onto the new bypass road and around all this onto the other side and get onto uh, Charles Street. So I've just walked around the bypass because we couldn't get down the goods yard, obviously, because it's a, a, a long time since this was written. I've just come down Charles Street and it tells you you have to turn left into uh, Lightwood Road, and I would imagine that is Lightwood Road. Um, Charles Street, turn left into Lightwood Road, and then right just before the railway overbridge into Hogshaw Villas Road. So uh, let's, let's go on down here, shall we? So I'll right, turn left here. I think this is Lightwood Road here. I can see at the top of the road there's a railway overbridge. And it says you just got to turn right before you get to that. Right, there's, uh, there's Hogshaw Villas Road and it says turn immediate left as, as we turn into it. So I think that's over there. So I think we've uh, drawn a blank here, it's, it's, everything's been built on since this was wrote. So I think we've got to get back onto uh, Lightwood Road and go up underneath the railway bridges and around the back over with that new housing estate on the top. And there should be a footpath up there we can go and actually get a bit more in the modern times close to where the, uh, the steam shed actually was. So uh, we've, got to, we've got to go this way, we've got to go back, we've got to retrace the footsteps and then go up. So I've had to come a, a bit further up the road, underneath the railway bridges. Like originally I had to go before, right before the railway bridges to get round, but obviously 
That was a bit of a dead end in the 21st century. So we've come up to Brown Edge Road. We're going to walk up there and you can walk into a bit of a cul-de-sac. And at the end of the cul-de-sac there's a public footpath that we can get down and hopefully get near the shed. But I'm getting this actually, there's a, there's a nice uh, Land Rover 110 over there and a nice colour combo, but I shouldn't get distracted too much because we're here today to find steam sheds. Right, so we just walked up Brown Edge Road, walked up the hill to a uh, Lady Croft Avenue, we're going to go up here and turn left and then try and find this public footpath. So I just walked up Brown Edge Road and we turned right up Ladycroft Avenue but forget that because that was we went up and walked away the top and couldn't get through so we had to come back down and follow the T nose, walk up Brown Edge Road a bit further and look what there is there, public footpath sign. So let's get down there and hopefully that will bring us out where we need to be. Look down there, there's some GBR rail freight wagons down there. I'm just down and look at a, a 21 wagon uh, GBR rail freight with a, I think a shed's pulling it, a class 66. But these bridges go down, this little footpath goes over a railway and these sidings and down there it lands in some land with uh, some concrete on the ground and a load of trees growing up and if you know, if you know what this railway stuff looks like, trees always grow on old railway lines or railway sheds because something with the oil or whatever is in the ground, trees love it and I reckon in all those trees we could be on the grounds of the original shed. Let's, let's go and have a look. So uh, we're going to actually get down into the shed, or wherever it was, and then we're going to look if we could get back the way the original book tells us what's up uh, a Hogshaw Villas Road, where we went up that little back passage and we drew a blank. That's over there somewhere behind those bushes, where the, the shed is up there, the Class 66. That's up there. Now this siding is what this Class 66 is stabled in with a, a wagon, with loads of 21 wagons he's got on the back, is you won't, you won't hear this saying anywhere else in any other book. Well, to the normal probably book, they probably this is Buxton sidings here, but to the to the Buxton lads, this is called the uh, Donneroo. And uh, I like and apparently Buxton lads have lots of different nicknames for 
all sorts of stuff. Very interesting names as well. And one of my favourite names that the books and lads use is uh, Shonka Donka. And I think it was, I think that's uh, a Dennis uh, Allison um, saying, I think. So uh, this is a, a new bridge they've put over because the, the uh, extended Donnaroo uh, sidings, so they've had to put this bridge in so the path can carry on, this public footpath. And here's the end of them here. And this bridge has got these really fancy uh, little channels and they're not, they're not for water, they're actually to put your bike, you run your bike up and down so you don't have to carry your little steps. Genius idea. I think we've arrived on the the, uh, the uh, original nine house shed number of the Buxton steam shed because there's two rails in the, a concrete base and I believe the shed was concrete and there's some old railway brick over there all bits and remains of railway brick everywhere all along here is all railway brick but I think we'll have to do a classic Thomas Edwards and delve into the deep bush and see what we can find lurking underneath all that undergrowth and see how much of the remains of this shed we can find. Well, I think I, think I need uh, some proper footwear, I think, because uh, my dealer boots are not going to go uh, at any much use in here because it's uh, like four in a bog and I don't want to ruin these. So uh, I'll just, uh, cameraman's got me with some uh, a big uh, booze bag here, posh northerners, eh? And um, I've got in here some wellies. So I've just got to get into these and uh, get back on the, on the trail of uh, old railways. Thank you very much. Hang anyway, on, I got me, I mean, wellies on now. I'm, I'm prepared to go in the, the home, the home base special day huh, from about five years ago. It's a, uh, you now I'm ready to go and explore the Buxton steam shed and see what we can find. And uh, before we've, I've even even started, I'm stood right next to a, an old sleeper here. So this is a, a map from above in 2021, and all this green is where the Buxton steam shed was. And then these sidings here, what we have today is Donneroo sidings and a few years ago Nodgrog stood on that bridge there of all network rail folk because he extended Donneroo sidings right up there, quite a way actually. But all in here it was a lot different story uh, at the, the turn of the century, even, well, even, you know, uh, 1960s, you know, it's not that long ago really. So if we, we bring this survey map up, from the early 1900s, because it's one of the best sort of detailed ones I can show you. Here we can like blow it in there, right? So you can see the, the modern times there, the housing estates and the, the lines they have today and the sidings. So those down the roof sidings have always been there, you can see them, but now they've, ex they've extended. But there you can see the shed, six roads in it, and there's that's the water tower. It's not a, a it's an earlier map, this, so because if you put it like this, well, I can tell you what's different here, is that turntable there is in a different location at a later date, but this is more on part two, I'll explain this later on. But, and this here is wider with more tracks and the turntable in the later times was up here, but I'll go more into that later on, part two, look for that, but Pretty much that's what it looked like all those years ago and that's sort of the best sort of map I can show you of what it looked like. Some are not as detailed but that's pretty much uh, what the Buxton Shed looked like back in its heyday. And talking of its heyday I'm going to put a series of photos up next of its actual heyday of pictures of enthusiasts and bashes of Tuck, of engines on the shed and like you can actually see the 
the inner workings of the shed and the, the water tank and the coal towers and uh, you can enjoy it to some classic TE um, looking back in time music so I hope you enjoy With the, uh, with the chair still on it, and it's all gone rotten in the middle. Oh. It's a bit like Lost Oak Hall. We found loads at Lost Oak Hall at that shed. There were stacks and stacks of sleepers. But this is a proper wooden one. It'd be, if you cut that in half, it'd be full of creosote, that will. I think it's quite rusty underneath all that moss. I can't really... Look, it's going apart on me now. I'm just looking for a... Uh, sometimes it has the date and it will say LMS on it or something like that. Or even uh, London North Western, some really old chairs. Uh, but uh, I can't seem to find anything on them. It seems to be a bit blank or they've gone a bit too... The cast have gone a bit too rusty and I can't get into them to see. But that's, uh, that's the first find of today with TE. But uh, I should say, behind camera, is at the back of the, the shed. As I walked in for the forest here, uh, that's the back of the shed and where the offices were, and like a mess room was at the back here. And where I was stood on that concrete, the rails, that's like the very, the very back of the shed with the, the buff, there'd be buffer stops at the back. And then that way is the entrance of the shed down there and through all these, I think you like some of these are silver birches and stuff, aren't they, some of these trees. Um, but we're going to go and see what else, and there's like there's bits, there's bits of rubble everywhere. There's concrete there, something. There's all sorts of, there's all sorts of railway brick hanging about. What's got that bluey, tingy colour? What's red? But it's gone like, it's like it's like the oil and like the soot and stuff goes into the brick, and it makes it like a like a blacky, bluey colour. It's classic brick colour. Even railway uh, houses. There's a railway terrace down there, and that's got the same sort of brick on it. But uh, in here. It's very hard to see because of all the trees. It used to have six roads in here inside the shed, and then either side of the shed, outside, was another road. So it had eight all together, but there was six inside the shed. But you couldn't imagine it. It was you couldn't imagine there was a big shed up on here. And this, if you looked at the side profile of the shed, it was like that with a roof. It was a funny looking roof on it, and it was all the way across here. But you can't tell, there's nothing, there's, apart from looking at bits of brick all being uh, turned up because, oh here you go, there's some, look at this, a wall, what's falling over, it's had not in there, not in all bricks, and they've used all the bricks, the old railway bricks as uh, fires, or, or I can uh, I can hear a whine of it, I think it's a class 66 coming, I don't know if it's going to come into the sidings or is it going to, is it going to go up, but I think it's going to come into the, into the sidings, uh, Donnaroo sidings I think it's going to come up, and that van's come up, he's, he's either changing drivers or um, he's doing something but he's coming in so we might get a bit of, as well as looking the old industry of Buxton Shed with steam there's lots of still workings, these sidings are quite frequently used from when, uh, when we turned up earlier there was a 66 in and it was just leaving so there's another one coming in now well, it's amazing all these bricks here what people have used and the do you think do you think the pe the think the people who built that knew that 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 hole did loads of uh, steam engines one day, you know, and lots of men from 
from their granddads and well not even dads yeah granddads and great granddads were working underneath those bricks and now they're using them as uh, bonfires in inside the shed it's pretty mad So I was just uh, filming that lovely uh, Class 66 up there but as I was filming I was looking down on the ground as you do because you never know what's on the ground and there's, there's two big cast iron bars here it's not rails, it's too wide for rails and it's not round for rails it's either been a girder what's come off the roof and it's been buried you know and it was just all rubble when they knocked the, they demolished the shed um, and it could have been part of whatever that war was I don't know what it was and that's another re remembrance of what the the shed was here, and I might add the shed uh, when it shut on the, the 4th of March 1968. A guy came in August 68 when all the rails had been ripped up, but the shed, the coaling tower, the water tower, and the turntable were still standing. Um, so he, he might have seen all this do up, you know, in these walls and that. And then I think very shortly after it got demolished. But some there's some folklore that it didn't get demolished to 73. But a lot of people say it went very soon after it shut in 68. They got rid of it all and it went. Um, but we're going to, today's video, we're actually going to try and find the foot, footings of the water tower, the coin tower and trying to find out where the turntable was. We've looked on maps and roughly know where it is in the heads, but we have to go on my wellies and prod about. I need a big stick really so I can get, you now get prodding around and see, go, oh yeah, that, that's a big hole there. And it goes all the way over there. So that, yeah, that looks like a turntable, but we don't know, we might not find it. But we're going to have a, a good mooch around here because he, there'd be stuff lying under here. And to be honest, if we had a, had a bit of a, sh a spade or shovel with me, we could have a dig around and I bet you I bet you're only like a foot underneath all this dirt what's grown up in the last 50 odd years. There'd be more underneath all this grass. But slowly as all the kids and all the dog walkers are walking through it, all the bits of bricks are popping up out the soil. So it is sort of bleeding uh, railway in this forest. But it's took it's took 50 years for them to come back up. But I bet there's a lot more underneath here. Some more here and some like wood. It's probably like a pit underneath there or something. Yeah, it's probably a pit or something underneath there. It's hard to really, and there's a bit of asbestos there, off the roof. Yeah, it's hard to really tell you how wide it was and how really, how long it was. Obviously we know where the back of the shed is, but I couldn't tell you where the entrance of the shed was, unless there's something very significant down here. But all this is, is it's had something there, look, it's got, Threads on there, it's had something on there. Oh, there's more, there's more bricks here being turned into fireplaces. And there's something here, some. Oh no, that's that's a bit of fly tipping, that is. That's someone's carpet from probably like 10 years ago. That's not, that's not original. There you go, there's a. Could have been a fire bucket at one time, maybe. Could be a wild guess, probably it's probably only made about 20 years ago, but it could be a fire bucket that doesn't seem strong enough because fire buckets, I always thought they were cast. It's very much like steel that is. So it could be that could be modern fly tipping that. But there's a lot of bricks, a lot of a lot of, a lot of railway bricks everywhere. Oh and that bluey tingy colour. Some are black here because they've had fires on it. 
but I think some are very much black from when the steam engines are in here in 1968, early 1968. So uh, what does it say in here then? So it says uh, Maidley uh, Collieries, and then it's had something else there, and then Lace it, I think it says, and then it says Staffs, what I mean, Staffordshire. I think that's what they known as uh, Crew Brick. What was uh, was made in air crew, or it could have been in crew, but it was made for London North Western Railways. It was sort of their own sort of railway brick. So I think that's what that is there. A lot of them don't say anything on, but that one did. That was a very good sign of where we could see where they were made. It's like when you go on beach cheating, you always look at the bricks where they're made. And uh, we just uh, our uh, our new friend has just come back, a class 66. All wearing Pulsar uh, rail gear there. T here is also repping Pulsar rail as well, and he doesn't even work on the railway. Because it's good, it's good quality kit, and they've even got underneath a, a Pulsar body warmer on. But I need to get, I've left my pants at home, but I need to get me proper Pulsar pants. I've got Port West pants at the moment, but I want to get the, the whole matching gear at some point. But they've got the, the whole shebang there. I don't understand sheds. They sound they sound like a big a big machine in the factory. There's no there's no noise to them at all. It's it's very much uh, they make more noise than they're actually doing. It's a bit of a weird one really. There's no no uh, no like uh, signature sound. With, well, it is a signature sound with them, but it's not like it's not like listening to a couple of tractors, is it? What Buxton used to have. But uh, we're gonna we've got I think round here. Not so sure. I'm sort of guessing. Round here somewhere is probably end at shed because the trees end here and there's only these little saplings round here and trees are always known for growing on really sort of like fertile like oil railway grounds, you know, old railway beds, you know, where track have been, trees grow up and all the trees have grown up through the shed there and then it, it, they stop here, they disappear. So I reckon this is round here is probably the end of the shed. Uh, but we're going to go and walk through here and walk round the back and look at the back of the shed again because there's, there's actually remains of the offices and we might be able to find some more evidence. But we, it's very hard really unless we, could, unless we could pick all the ground up here, have a time team day, come down and do a bit of excavation and dig up all the grass, cut a few trees there, we might be able to find even more. But you, we, this, that's for another day that is. It's two, uh, only a two man uh, operation today. All oh, this land here is Hogshaw uh, re recreation. And uh, it, they, they're trying to save it at the moment. There's loads of posters everywhere because they want to build on it. And it's not just the old abandoned grounds of the shed and the turntable and the water tower. Further down, there's some playing fields and there's Hogshaw woods. And they're all trying to build and all that. And they're trying to, they're trying to save it at the moment. Uh, so uh, this could be in a, maybe another 10 years, maybe even nearer. Could have a load of brand new Hogshaw housing estate sat on here, but uh, they're trying to save it. The locals are trying to save it at the moment, so I don't know what's the, I don't know what's going on if they're going to save it or not. Oh, Cameraman's getting all beat up with old trees there. It's just even on this path, there's bits of brick there, look, bits of brick. They're everywhere, but you can't say like I, like I said before. I haven't got a clue where the end of the shed is, and I couldn't tell you what any of it because don't forget when they demolish something, brick goes everywhere. So it could have scattered it like 20 foot further than where it was built up, you know, so you couldn't really tell where it was anyway, unless like at Lostock Hall near Leyland, you could actually still see the concrete floor and where all the lines was. It was really like simple to see where everything was, but everything's grown up here, so much grass and trees. And I think they've, it was, you know, it was, it was knocked down such a long time ago in the late 60s, early 70s, but it's totally gone where Lostock Hall was all the way through 80s, 90s when it got demolished. So it's still quite recent times, but this is a long, long time ago when this got demolished. We want to work his way back up to the back of the shed to look at, look at the office and I can hear the 66, we might get a bit more 66 action, but uh, we, shouldn't be, we shouldn't be looking at class 66s because we should be talking of, of when the steam shed was here and, 
the, early, the, the last few months of the steam shed being here, they had they had seven uh, 8Fs still stationed here, and apparently right into the early months they, they didn't have seven, it went to six, one got withdraw straight away. Yeah, they were working seven, six, eight Fs still in this shed in the late, early 68. But the last runnings, the last few months, the bashes all swarmed down to the Peak District to see the last steam working because certain parts of the country, they knocked steam off altogether. So they had to come and find them elsewhere and Peak District was one of them. So they'd come down here and it was apparently at early 68, it was very cold up here, like Buxton always is very cold and very uh, very snowy so there's lots of the last steam workings around Peak District of um, in the snow big steam engines in the snow so they didn't even get nice weather it was all uh, it was all in the snow and cold just looking down here I think there's big bits of this here I think this is all bits of bits of coal that is just lucky I thought I could hear a doggy then um, bits of old coal sat on this path along here now there's old pictures of this side of the shed with the with a little siding up the um, up it, um, and it had even in when he ripped all the track up, this siding was still in that well, was still there, and there was old tenders there that had been made into water tanks, so it was still up the side of the shed. So that could have been anything around there. But let me just side backtrack like a slight bit. When I was talking about the last days of steam here, and he had seven, well, he had six actually. One got withdrawn straight away. They had six uh, class uh, 8F steam engines or steam uh, locomotives. If you don't know what they are, an 8F is pretty much a freight working loco. It didn't really do much passenger. It was mainly made for freight and it had small driving wheels on it. It didn't have big wheels. It had really small driving wheels and I think it had eight driving wheels. Main, uh, made primarily for freight workings and it's perfect around there. And I think the freight it worked here in the last few months when this shed was there and steam all together in, in, in Britain in 68, I think they did lots of quarry stuff because around it it's all limestone quarries. And I think it did the cement works at Hope. I think they were sort of the last runnings it did around here, eight Fs. Uh, now we still have ATFs in the modern day world. I think, I think is it West Coast Railways have an ATF or a couple ATFs, but they obviously now they, they, they can't use steam for freight on them all. They don't, well, it's, it's, you know, everything's moved on and we have steam locomotives on the main line now for um, uh, charters, tour charters and rail tours and they, 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 uh, they pull eight carriage uh, passengers now and you, you me, cameraman can go and ride on them. So uh, we've come back to back at shed where actually where I put my wellies on before and where I found a bit of track, it's probably the only bit of track you can really see here, a lot of it's buried or it's been ripped up but obviously where track has been left in concrete it's too much of a, a pain and, a, and, and time to rip it up so they tend to leave concrete down with old bits of track in here. This is probably the last sort of remains of what you can properly see what the shed was at Buxton, you know, with the tracks, you know, where engines would have gone and, and, and like the buffer stops here, here. That's all you want to see and it just leads into that vast mini forest what's grown up the last 50 years and that's it. There's nothing a lot left and there's apart from lots of bricks and what we found, I think, oh hold on, there's, we saw, we saw sleeper didn't we, with chairs on. But here at the back, well there's all brick at the back, from what I've read and what I've been told, is these were the offices at the back and I think there's actually a picture somewhere of the last men on the, on the steam shed here, and at the back here in the office. And it, these, they're, they're very much like office floors aren't they at the back here. You can tell, and you, you can tell where the grass is grown, where it's had walls in probably between each room. That's probably been a wall there, where this bit, bit of tump of grass is grown here, along here. And then that would have been another room, maybe toilets or whatever was on the back. But this was pretty much all the 
the office is now there. This, this is the front because it lock it goes concrete and then into brick. So I don't know if there was a wall there and then that was the edge of the room or I don't know. But you can pretty much see where it was. Once you start looking at pictures and going or getting reading stuff, you say, oh, his office is at the back. Then you can look and go, oh, yeah, that's what was there. Because if you just turn up here and go, oh, there's something been here, but I don't know what it was. <laughs>